Sure. Let me make a couple points here because what we're talking about in this conversation, it's like we're we're reaching to reclaim how things were in the past. We're talking about this concept of courtship, right? Courtship is a process that historically has been used to bring a man and a woman together under the guidance of the woman's father in order to preserve her chastity so that the two of them can get married, right? This is a process that's reserved for traditional women done by traditional men. It's, you close the doors? it's funny because like, as I'm sitting here at this table, it's, it, it's evident to me like this is you guys want this traditional treatment like i think every every woman dreams of it you know you hear the story about the guy who built the woman the house in the notebook it's like wow that's so romantic that's so sweet right like that's that's like a traditional thing and i think all women in their hearts of hearts like they want a guy who's traditional like that who wants to pursue them and wants to love them would you guys agree with that mm -hmm. yeah yes that behavior like historically yeah the agreement was a guy would pursue a woman like that in a courtship, only those two people would be talking. So if like, if I was courting you, for example, the agreement would be you would not be talking to anybody else. I would not be talking to anybody else. Courtship was also something that was, that was reserved typically for virgins, right? Women were virgins throughout history. We can rail about the patriarchy all we want, but part of a father's job was to protect his daughter's chastity because there's a lot of bad men out there, right? Like we, we're dreaming of like reclaiming this thing from the past, but it requires both men and women to actually do each of their roles, which is to Brian's point. Like it's traditionally speaking, a woman's job to preserve her chastity. And a woman who preserves her chastity is going to warrant that kind of traditional treatment from a man compared to, you know, if a woman's sleeping around with a bunch of different guys and then she's like, no, I want you to treat me traditionally. He's going to look at her and be like, well, you weren't traditional up until now. Like, why should I, why should I roll out the red carpet when you just gave yourself so easily to all these other guys, right? That's like, that's the mental conundrum that, that guys have. It makes it challenging for them. The ideal, I think, is for both sexes to return to this tradition, but it requires both men and women to fix their behavior. And I think that starts with every single one of us. Yeah, and to add to just the body count thing. So in the same way that a lot of the women here wish for that return to tradition, traditional courtship, men paying for first dates, men providing, men being protectors, men opening the door for you, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and most people wouldn't have any issue with you saying that if I, as a guy, say, I wish women were still virgins, or heck, even had a sub five body count, who are modest, both in behavior and appearance, not blasted in plastic surgery, wanted to be submissive, followed my lead, were not quarrelsome, who knew how to take care of the internal affairs of the household, I would get looked at as whoa misogynist misogynist how dare you but that's the opposite side of the coin of the yep. traditional demands that you want from men yep you're equating that to opening a car door flowers like flowers car door like paying for a 10 dollar date like those are such like tiny simple just, like, things. things versus like what you're asking about a woman is like what's already been of her past so in your case past I'm, matters though you past well, matters. No, i'm not not saying that but i'm asking like so in order to go on a date for you personally with a woman do you talk to her for a while and ask her about her body count before the date happens just so you make sure that you pay for someone <laughs> who is only <laughs> have less than five because I'll, she sure. also can lie and she she'll could lie. never know she so could it's lie. like I'm i curious. hope she wouldn't though no i, yeah. I, I hope she wouldn't lie but because i, I think honesty is because very you're important. basing your actions on the first date based off of who she is or what she's already sure. done so it's like not yeah. a physical or like even a behavioral thing really it's like oh, yeah she can put body a count is, neck on body counts pretty behavioral well, but. And, but i'm saying like in that first date like like she, that stuff that she already had done regardless sure. of that you know what i mean so it's like she can put a turtleneck on and say she's never been with anybody but it's like why well, I, I certainly hope that our first interaction is not predicated on deception a and right. a lie but i'm just but curious for you is that like your norm of like you usually like to talk to a woman and ask her those certain kinds I'll, of yeah I, I typically would i'll have a, qu a conversation with a woman beforehand i might not just outright be like how many dudes have you fucked <laughs> but right. i might try to ask some questions what's your relationship history hmm. that can sort of give me an inkling okay she's dated maybe th this many right. guys that could be a slight indicator does she drink does she party does she go to bars, nightclubs, mm -hmm. et cetera. Let me look at her Instagram. That could potentially be an indicator. Granted, there's a lot of women who are very unassuming. They might be a bit shy. They might actually present modestly, mm -hmm. but secretly they have 
quite a past. Yeah. So it's not always a perfect indicator, but we as For men, sure. we will try to suss out these things through alternative means. Um, but I'm also okay just outright asking, so okay, what's, fuck mm -hmm. it, what's your body count? Mm. That's, I'll ask. That's crazy that you put so much importance on body count. Like, that's just so crazy to me. Why is it crazy? Because I just don't see why it matters. Like, why does it matter what... Mm. She, I mean, like, I can understand, like, if she cheated. Okay, she cheated. Okay, that's... I get that. Sure. But how many people she chose to sleep with, I don't understand how that is, like, relevant okay. at well, all. Well, so for... for I'll answer that. And there's a there's a ton of reasons why. I think one of the probably one of the most important reasons, at least for me, is that when I'm dating a girl, I want her even on the first date. I want her undivided sexual and romantic attention. If she's going out and dating other men, sleeping with other men, first off, I don't even. That's not a woman that I even want to pursue. I want a woman to be properly single when I'm even first meeting her. And I think a lot of people don't move that way. Um, so body count, your past, is proxy for promiscuity. Pro promiscuity is proxy for, there's a good chance that when I'm talking to her, when I meet her, she's got another guy in the picture. There's another guy that she's sleeping with. To me, that's gross. I don't wanna, I don't wanna date you, I don't wanna kiss you, I don't wanna have se I certainly don't wanna have sex with a woman who's having sex with another man. So is that complicated for you to understand or does that kind of make no, a sense? No, I totally understand but that. So, but so somebody who has a high body count, that can be a proxy for current promiscuity. So if you have a high body count, you could be sleeping. Yeah. There's a greater likelihood that you're sleeping with another guy while I'm talking to you. I certainly don't want that. Also, if you have a high body count, greater likelihood of STD. And also you've, you've started to, the more sexual partners you have, the greater difficulty it come when it comes to pair bonding with somebody. If you've had 50 previous sexual partners and I'm number 51, I'm, you're not gonna view me in a particularly special way. At least that's my view. And I think we all, both men and women, want to be viewed as special to our potential romantic partners, to yes. our potential future husbands yep. and wives. Mm -hmm. If I'm number 51, I'm number 101, I, like that's, that's, and the big thing also, this is a differential between men and women. So. I could list a bunch of examples that I think apply to both men and women. STDs, I think it's the case for both men and women. You could certainly make arguments that um, that the actual act of sexual intercourse, the transmission rate might be, diff there might be a differential there. Perhaps women are more susceptible to getting an STD than the reverse for various reasons due to anatomy, but we don't need to get into that. Um, the big difference though that does not exist in women, that does exist in men, and I would argue this is a evolutionary psychology basis, biological basis, is paternity uncertainty. So men, it's, it's not even necessarily an intellectual thing. A woman who's promiscuous, you cannot guarantee the paternity of your child if she's promiscuous. How are you going to DNA test? And well, but that doesn't undo easy. hundreds of thousands of years of evolution. No. So for example, a woman who has 10 husbands, right? If she sleeps with all of them, who's the fucking father? Whereas a, a man who has 10 wives, you know who the father is in each of those instances. So women can, if you have a child, you know with certainty that the child is yours, obviously because of just the anatomical and biological reality that women are the ones who give birth. But women, we since we don't give birth, we cannot with certainty know if the child is ours. So one of the best ways to be certain of that is one, if she's a virgin, or two, we know that she's not promiscuous and has a low body count. I have a question. Sure. Um, do you, and do you want to respond to that, or yeah, sorry. maybe you respond yeah. and then? <laughs> I I don't know. I guess I'm just not. I'm just I I I somewhat understand like what you're Why saying. Why are women attracted to tall men? Tall. Tall men. That? Why are women attracted to muscular men? Because they can protect them. Maybe this like I don't know. Okay. Like but, giving. But is it, okay, sure, right? So in that same way, men are attracted to women who are not promiscuous. It, it's like, uh, it's ingrained in us. It's who you going to further you, your bloodline, really. Yeah. Well, because you mentioned, you mentioned, um, well, we have DNA tests now. Yeah. But DNA, bec just because we have this invention of, of human brilliance doesn't undo, again, the fact that there's been hundreds of thousands of years of evolution. It's ingrained in us as men. And again, this thing does not exist in women. Paternity, there, when it comes to the maternity, I guess, or whatever, this, it's impossible to exist in women because when you have a child, you know with certainty that, that that's your child. Mm -hmm. But you could 
be hooking up with another dude. We don't know. That kid might not be ours. So, yeah. that, so men have a more natural revulsion to female promiscuity than the reverse. Not to say that I think women are totally justified in ha taking issue and quarrel with male promiscuity. Mm -hmm. However, there's not that ingrained biological and evolutionary basis that exists in men. It's, the, it's this simple. Let's say I'm talking to two women. One of them has a zero body count. The other has a body count of 50. Which one of them do you think I'm going to feel more confident in her um, being, like, w which one do you think will inspire more confidence in her fidelity long term? 50. I'm just kidding. The virgin. Right, exactly. And it's just, it's a natural, immediate instinct, right? And it's, it's, it's really that simple. It's like our, our biology, our DNA, like, it's, it, it, it hunts for that, like, purity. And yeah. there is, there is, like... A revulsion, a revulsion towards that promiscuity because it is biologically very dangerous for a man to commit to a woman who might sleep with another man who he might end up raising the child of. But like don't it's, you think it's thousands of years of like programming. Don't you think there's purity in a girl that is loyal to you regardless of body count? Like she's We're talking loyal about to like you. sexual purity. Yeah, but I just mean like taking away body count, let's say she has a lot of body count, but she's loyal to you. She's never slept with anyone but you since being with you. Isn't there purity in that too? Like, why is it just like... I wouldn't call that like purity. I would call it loyalty. But the question of why it matters is like, for example, okay, so you could have a woman who has a 50 body count and she could be the most loyal woman in the world, but a man is still going to want to know, hey, how did that happen? Like what, what like if a guy cares about body count, he's going to want to know, how did that happen? What happened there? What compelled you to sleep with all of these men? Like, what was the pattern that unfolded? What was it in your psychology? Like, he's probably going to want to understand that if it's something that he cares about, because ultimately at the end of the day, it's like, is this woman going to be loyal to me in the future? Like loyalty is extremely, extremely important, obviously to both sexes, mm -hmm. you know? That's one aspect of it. Another aspect of it too is like, like Brian was talking about before, us men are extremely territorial when it comes to women that we're really into. Like if a guy doesn't really care about a woman that much, like he might not care if she's seeing other guys, but if a guy really likes a woman and he really loves her, he's not going to want to share her with other men in the present or in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's, it's a, sex is a very sacred thing, you know, especially from a man towards a woman. And obviously no woman wants a guy who's going to cheat on her, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's different. Like, for us men, it's a very territorial thing. Like that's your woman. Like you don't want another man touching her and you know, who do you her think, past can affect that. Who do you think cheats more, men or women? I think on average it's men. Why do you think, I think that it's, is? I, th I saw a stat the other day. I think it was like divorce statistics and how many of those divorces are filed because okay. of adultery. And I think the statistic was like 34%. It was the women, woman cheating and 38% was the men, man oh. cheating. I think it was slightly it's higher for men. Too much of a difference. What was your question, though? You asked why do you think that is? Yeah. Well, I think you know it's, bio. I mean, biologically speaking, men like. We have a, a biological drive to spread our seed as far as possible. It's just part of our nature. That doesn't mean it has to dominate us, but like it's just part of our nature. You know, a lot of guys, like you know, guys will. I know guys who have cheated on their girlfriends and they typically just cheat because they feel an impulsive physical desire. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's real. like, it's hard to describe what it's like being a guy, but like, you know, when you've got testicles, like your body's like, yo, we've got loads, we gotta deliver, <laughs> like get them out, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's different, like women are kind of wired more emotionally towards sex, whereas guys are much more like physical, like I need to get this out of my system. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why guys more often cheat. Okay. Like cheating for women is like, it's sex in general for women is typically a very emotional process like if you I ima imagine you guys would agree like if you don't feel an emotional connection with a guy you're probably not going to want to sleep with him mm. would you yeah. agree with that <clears throat> yeah yeah it's not the same for men oftentimes you know guys will just have sex with a woman i'm gonna try to uh blast through some of these chats here that are gonna come in and um hold on add one thing oh really quick on the body count thing you mentioned like why does the past matter yeah. um i mean i would argue I mean, you certainly a woman who used to uh, a woman who used to be promiscuous and is no longer promiscuous is more desirable than a woman who has a passive promiscuity and ongoing promiscuity. But I would also say that a woman who doesn't have a past of promiscuity 
and it's currently not promiscuous is more desirable than the other things too. Um, but if past doesn't matter, let me go around the table on this. Would you date a guy who has slept with men? Yes. Oh. I'm not sure. Maybe, yeah. Okay. No. Uh, huh? <laughs> but hold on. Uh, I thought hmm? that this is past. That's doesn't... sexual. That's sexual preference, though. Like, that, I don't know. That's okay, like... so you wouldn't date a guy who's bi? No. Okay. Let's say he used to, but not anymore. He's straight now. <laughs> it doesn't now. work that way. No, maybe, you know. You're either bi or you're not. Well, <laughs> let's say it's been like five years. He hasn't slept with a man. No. But he's... In the potential, I, the potential in the future, it could happen, right? Ooh, bingo. Did I just, did you I just, just made give a point. You, yeah. <laughs> Wait, the potential in the future, it could happen. Oh, yes. man, that was rich. Yes. Well, good, exactly, exactly why body count matters, because body count is an indicator for uh, infidelity. I don't know. You sleep with a lot of people. Like, they've done studies I mean, on this. They've done did, studies. Did the light bulb just go off? No, I don't think it indicates... Inf oh, sorry. I don't think your past... I mean, the thing is, I agree it's hard for people to change, but I don't necessarily think your past indicates... Like, I'm not going to assume it's not my a partner is going to do something based on something he's done in the past. I would rather trust who he is in this present so, moment so you're and saying, go off you're saying what he's doing. If you, if you met a guy... And he cheated on his past 10 girlfriends. That's different. But that's, that's different because exactly... he cheated. But you're just saying promiscuity. You're not saying that all these women, every single of their 50 body count was a cheating incident. No, that's not what I'm saying. But so... they, they've actually done numerous studies on this. Mm -hmm. Numerous studies. And promiscuity is a very strong indicator for infidelity. Mm -hmm. Very strong indicator. And I would, yeah, argue, yeah. I would argue that past behavior is typically a very strong indicator for future behavior. 